That's a great uh, coping mechanism. And we're live. <laughs> Okay, I was still sharing my screen. Great, we are live. Okay, so can we can we start? I don't see how many participants. Um, okay. I will, I will slowly start. I hope everybody is, is connected. Um, okay, so I would like to um, welcome you all uh, to today's uh, online workshop entitled uh, Online Tools for uh, Language Teaching. Uh, so today's workshop is being organized uh, within the EU project uh, Best for Languages. So first, I would like to say that the whole uh, workshop will be uh, recorded uh, and will remain as a video on our uh, Facebook and YouTube profiles. So in case you miss anything or you misunderstood or uh, you have to maybe leave early, uh, you will be able to watch it and rewatch it uh, later on these uh, platforms. And also one important thing, in case you have any questions or comments or thoughts uh, throughout the whole presentation, uh, please feel free to, to comment in the comment section and uh, our trainers uh, will uh, read and answer your questions uh, throughout the, the presentation. Uh, okay, so I would like to give you first uh, a, a little overview of the whole project. Um, six partnering institutions from uh, five different countries uh, work together in the project entitled Best for Languages, which was founded by uh, the European Union. Um, so the six partnering institutions are, our first one is Bridge Language Study House. Uh, they are from uh, Cluj Napoca in Romania and uh, Enicor, uh, their representative was actually our coordinator uh, and a very successful one, may I add. <laughs> Uh, the two, there were two partners from Germany, uh, Parduisberg Training Center and Iberica Sprachschulen. Uh, one partner from Poland, Centrum Educatine EST. Uh, one from Italy, uh, Europes, and RAM, one from Slovenia, uh, Nista Language Center. Um, so this is this was a two-year partnership which started two years ago and actually concludes today. Uh, the main part of the project were uh, trainings. Uh, they were organized in each country. So there was uh, each of the partners uh, hosted one training and the training lasted uh, five days. Uh, so there were uh, trainings uh, that were held in Berlin, in Florence, in Cluj Napoca. Uh, there was supposed to be also one training in Koper and another one in Vadovice, but unfortunately they were supposed to be held this spring and this summer. So they were transferred to an online version, but they were also very uh, successful. So the main uh, purpose of the project uh, was to improve the competencies of the school managers. So improving the quality, innovation, the internalization of language schools. And of course, it was also very focused on the teaching part. So uh, improving the attractiveness and effectiveness of language teaching. And the, participant, uh, the participants organized uh, creative and innovative activities uh, during which they shared ideas, strategies, um, experience, uh, Um, so, uh, as I said, in each country, there were uh, two trainings. So one was organized for the teachers and another one was organized for the managers. So there were in each training, there were at least two teachers uh, uh, from each institution and at least one manager. So you can imagine that a lot of ideas and experience uh, was discussed. So it was quite rich in <laughs> in material. Um, I would like to mention that uh, throughout the project, we created uh, a handbook, uh, which contains uh, all important information about the project's activities. 
and uh, some of uh, the activities are actually also going to be presented uh, today by our trainers. So the handbook is entitled uh, Handbook for Teachers and Institutional Development Strategies for Language Schools. Okay, I would now like to pass uh, the word to Elisabetta, the project manager of our Italian partnering school from Florence, Europass. Uh, she will present of the project. Thanks, Mika. Hi, everyone, and welcome from, uh, from Florence as well. So I am uh, Elisabetta and I collaborated in the teachers group to create the teachers handbook part. We tried to organize it as much as clear and easy as possible to allow all teachers, all of you, to use and reuse these resources in your, in your own classes. And they have been very, very useful for me as a, as a teacher. And uh, um, we tried to um, schedule, to set each uh, learning activity with a topic, a short description of the method, a sample of the exercise with this method, the benefits and uh, all the steps that you can follow in order to recreate activities uh, on your own. And uh, we studied lots of uh, apps like uh, lyrics training, TED-Ed, the learning apps, uh, movie making, quizzes, uh, Moodle. And uh, so you're going to study and uh, discover some of these um, apps with, uh, with my colleagues. And uh, I hope uh, you, you enjoy and I'm sure you will. Bye. <laughs> Okay, thank you very much, uh, Elisabetta. Uh, now, I know that most of you that joined us today are teachers, but maybe some of you also have some sort of uh, managerial roles. So uh, maybe you will also be interested in, uh, in the management aspect of our project. Uh, so I would like to also present uh, this part. So we focused on uh, the management needs and issues and we, uh, covered quite a few um, um, topics, uh, which were, for example, efficient ways and techniques to integrate new teachers into the team, so onboarding, uh, the discrepancy between institutional expectations and teacher performance, so the both sides' performance are met, and a very important one, uh, marketing for language schools, monitoring and reporting in language programs, uh, giving feedback and assertive communication, giving and handling criticism, uh, human resource management, and the last one was managing extra uh, curricular uh, language services, which is also a very important one. Um, okay, so now I would like to, um, to move to the uh, training part. So I would like to introduce uh, the first uh, trainer today, which is Alex. Uh, from the Polish partnering institution, EST. Alex will present us a digital game. And I would like to once again remind you that uh, you are welcome to write any question or comment in the comment section. We will appreciate your uh, views on the topic. Okay, thank you very much for the introduction. Um, actually, I would like to present a, a couple of digital games, not only one. Uh, to facilitate the presentation, I would like to share a screen. Uh, let's hope it will work. Um, It seems that the something is blocking the um, the share, sh screen sharing option. Um,
uh, I guess something uh, something disconnected. Something uh, I have ah, to reload okay. the page. Hopefully, I'll be able to share the screen now. Um, Um, okay, we we are experiencing some uh, difficulties. Um, um, so we're going to move on to the next speaker. Uh, it's uh, Lydia from our um, German partner. Uh, oh no, excuse me, from our Romanian partner, uh, Bridge Language Study House from uh, uh, from Romania, and she will present uh, learning apps. So Lydia, I pass the word uh, to you. Yes, hi everyone. Uh, I will try as well to share my screen. I hope that it will work. So I am going uh, to present you today Learning Apps, a very flexible... Um, I will share including the video, okay. Can you confirm me if you can see the screen sharing? Okay, thank you very much. Uh, so basically the learning apps, uh, I like it very much because I can use a lot of, lot of materials from here. I can create my own. And as you know, we can still even the applications created by the others, others activities that we like. Um, you can see here the possibility to choose the language that you want to use. So if you are not familiar with English, you can choose any other language uh, from the platform. Uh, you can create your own classes or you can have your own applications. And we can see here a lot of categories. Uh, for example, we have here Browse Apps and create apps. Browse apps means that we can find um, different uh, activities, exercises that has been already created and we can modify and update it uh, accordingly to our needs. Create apps means that we can create our own material for our own classes. Uh, I will try to show you some of the activities that I like very much. Uh, for example, now I am accessing my apps. Can I just have a short confirmation that if I am moving in the... Yes, you can see. So, for example, one of my activities that I really, really like is, for example, for the listening activities. First, I'm going to show you just a little bit of the, the activity that I am using. And then I will explain it how to create it. Uh, this type of activity was created for an A11 Italian class. And in this case, it is about a song that I like very much and even my students likes. If I am going to play the songs, the song will stop in, um, I don't know, of, after a few seconds. And the students should answer to the questions. Let's see how it works. Mm -hmm. 
So, for example, the first question is, please describe uh, the boy that you can see in this short video. Uh, as I told you, it was for an A11, so for me it was important to identify the eyes, the mouth, uh, the hair, if the hair is short or long, etc., the colors of the eyes. If I am click on go on the video, then the song will continue. And the other question is, please describe the physical aspects of the lady of this song. And then I have some questions for my students. For example, uh, where the story of the song uh, begins, uh, I can help them uh, by providing some questions in a restaurant, in a library, in a, um, a store or in another store or in a musical store. And what the two, the two characters are doing. So basically, if I am uh, clicking on go on the video, we can see the whole song and we will have several questions. If I want to create a similar activity, then I am going to access my folder. The folder is listening. I have here the song. I can click on it. And here you can see create similar application. Create a similar app, create a copy of this application, so I can create even a copy. And if I am going to create a similar app, then I have to fulfill all uh, the blank spaces. I can give a title, for example, for another type of activity when I am going to use a listening one. Uh, then I can provide uh, what I am demanding from my students. In this case, please answer to the questions. But if you want, uh, I don't know, just to ask them to describe something that you will write here, please describe the images. I can add the video. So I am going to select the video and I am going to search another song or another uh, movie trailer or anything else, for example, from YouTube, and I'm going to use it. After that, I will have here the time, the time of my uh, YouTube video, and I can here write the questions. And I can add an, uh, as many questions as I want. For example, here I have seven questions. If I want another one, I will see, I will click on add another element. And you can see the time to display. The time to display means the time of the YouTube video. And here I will write my question. If I consider that it is finished, I will finish editing and I can uh, have even a preview of my new uh, activity. I can share the applications. For example, I am going to access another one, the same activity. And you can see here the web link, full screen link, embedded one, so you can share to your students and they can listen even as a homework um, or as an extra activity if they like to, to listen songs or if they want just to practice uh, uh, the comprehension. Another type of activity that I am going to show you that I am using as well for an Italian class because I am teaching Italian is, for example, a puzzle activity. The puzzle activity means that uh, the students should find 
for example, the image and uh, the text that I have added. If I want to create a similar application, then I will click on create similar application or create a copy of this and I can change everything on the application. For example, create a similar app. I can, here it is, for example, house and objects of the house. But I can say here, for example, uh, the office feature. And then I have the instruction uh, to find the image and the word that better suits for that image. And then I can write here the word, for example, table, and I can select an image. I have the possibility to have on my own computer something or, for example, to look on the internet for some images, and then I can go to the next question. So this is basically how I can uh, create my own activities. For example, if I want to see what other teachers are using, I will go to Browse Applications. In my case, I am not interested, for example, in German geography, English environment. I am interested, for example, in Italian. Um, I will choose, for example, this one with the tenses. I can click. I will see what other teachers created. But if I am not like this activity, I will create a similar application. First of all, I will create a copy of this application. Because creating the copy, I will access my apps. And you can see that I have here in my apps already uh, the same activity. I am going to click on it. And uh, then I can edit. For example, create similar app. The first one. You can see here, I will introduce the title. Here, the instruction, complete the paragraph with the correct form of these irregular verbs. Make sure to use special characters, for example, vowels or accent, etc. And then I can start to create the text and to use any, any kind of text I want. After, I, when I am uh, going to finish, so finish editing and show preview, I will have a preview. I can save the app. The app will be saved in my apps. I can share it as well with my students. And what is very important, and I really like it, I can have a private application. This means that I will use it. There will not be seen by the others. Or I can have public application. Public application means that uh, any other person can see my application and can even uh, try it out. I can send it to my students. So the web link, just copy and paste it and just send to your students and they will be able to, to play at home or um, just to exercise their knowledge. And basically, this is about learning apps. If you want to create a new one, then you, if you have a new idea for a new activity, you just can simply follow the rules that you can see here. Pick a template, uh, fill in the content, save your app, and then you can share it. You can share it to your students, or you can just simply share it uh, to make it publicly. And uh, as you can see, you have here a lot of activities, matching pairs, group assignments, number line, uh, close text, crosswords, pairing game, horse race. So a lot, a lot of activities that you can uh, create. Uh, for example, for the pairing game, if I am going to click on this app, you will have here example one, example two, three, or any other examples. Basically, it's the same application that I showed you with the house. And you can start to edit the application exactly as I showed you. And then you have to save it, and the application will be here in your folder. 
you can even um, you have the possibility to create your own folders create a folder for example uh, for listening activities um, for matching activities for dances and you will have different folders so this is the learning apps. I am using it because it is uh, my students really like it. Uh, I am uh, sharing them as well uh, the matching activities because it is more um, suitable for them to click on their own computer. Um, so basically, this is how uh, I am using this uh, this type of platform. If you have any questions to me, I am here to answer you. Well, if someone needs to start learning English language from the beginning, um, there are a lot of applications. That I think that they can use even learning apps. They can, um, they, they, they should uh, search for the type of activities that are suitable for them. If there are kinesthetic ones that I am suggesting, for example, uh, a matching activity. If they are visual one, uh, visual learners, I am suggesting, for example, matching or crosswords or activities where effectively you have to see something. If somebody is an auditive learner, then I suggest them, for example, uh, listen to songs and to try to answer to the questions. Uh, only if the students want to create, oh, I have here another question, do the students have to sign in? Uh, the students should sign in if they want to create their own activities. If not, you can simply just uh, copy and paste the web link of your activity. Um, for example, I like to challenge my students. Sometimes I give them the permission to create their own activity because like this, they are forced to use uh, more correctly the language that I am actually uh, teaching. Uh, but if not, you just can send the web link or uh, the embedded link and they can play at home. For example, for this activity that I uh, showed you, um, this one with the images. Uh, for example, web link, just copy. You should open a new web page, paste it. And uh, the students will have it on the full screen or the full screen link. You can paste it and you will see just the full screen and they can start to play it. Can you share a created app as a public app even? Uh, yes, you can share. Um, what I have noticed, for example, for the activity that I showed you, if I use, for example, a trailer, I think that the trailer are usually uh, approved for the large public, so I don't have to worry about the copyright. Uh, if I am going to use, for example, a song, that I showed you, because I say, uh, then I noticed that YouTube sometimes um, just cancel the song, the link that I use, so I have to replace it once again. Uh, I used uh, 
this application in uh, my language courses. And yes, I learned this application uh, during the Erasmus project. Uh, for example, how do the students get to benefit from your class? Um, for the song that I used, uh, I have an activity for them that is already prepared. So I am not using just so simply the song. I have here several questions, very, very simple one. If they are listening, um, 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 which artists are they prefer? If they are used uh, to listen to the video, to the TV, when? And for example, one of my questions, if uh, they used to listen Italian songs. Then, for example, I have some pictures. They have to, to try to figure out the correct order of the pictures. Like this, they can already see the song that we are going to listen. And then I am using properly the song to, to check out the comprehension. And in the end, if there are problems, then I am uh, going to give them, for example, the entire song and, in, and even a short story about uh, the composers of the song. So this is how I am using it. And I think that, yes, they are uh, going to have a lot of benefits from them because, you know, children, for example, at their age, they are learning a lot of uh, listening to the songs, for example. Uh, so even my adult learner are having a lot of benefits. Okay, uh, I received a message. We will answer to the other questions uh, in the end. I am going to give back um, the microphone uh, to the next uh, speaker. Okay, so uh, I'm very sorry, but we had an issue with uh, the browser, Firefox, which was uh, blocking uh, the screen sharing. Um, I hope that you can see it now. Okay, so at um, Education Center EST, we have been ex experimenting with uh, various uh, digital technologies for education, including digital games. So I would like to share uh, some experiences with you uh, resulting from this practice. Um, uh, one thing to mention in the beginning, uh, we mainly work with young people uh, middle and uh, high school students. So what I'm going to say um, is relevant uh, for this group. We don't really have much experience of working with uh, younger children. Uh, with adults, uh, we use uh, different strategies. Um, when, we, when we talk about um, teaching with games, um, we mean some form of a uh, playful uh, learning experience. Nowadays, this usually refers uh, to either uh, game-based learning or gamification. So I would like to clarify these two approaches. Uh, both the, the terms, the concepts are today buzzwords in education. Uh, but just to make sure that we understand the terms in the, in the same or similar way. Um, so, by gamification, uh, we mean applying some game elements to a non-game uh, situation. In our context, imagine that you want to teach uh, grammar. Teaching grammar is usually a non-game situation. It's usually actually uh, quite, uh, quite boring. Uh, but you can do it in a more interactive, uh, funny, uh, playful mode if you use an app. Uh, which uh, gamifies 
uh, the tasks. So the students can get some assignments. Uh, uh, this can be a sort of a competition. Uh, other players can take part, but you are still learning a grammar, but in a more, um, let's say, playful mode. So this is gamification. Uh, Game-based learning uh, means an actual inclusion of whole games in the learning process. Um, so they can be any games. But nowadays, the term GBL, game-based learning, mainly refers to video games. Um, so the basic question, uh, why teach with games? Um, we believe, and there is a strong evidence that supports uh, this belief, uh, that um, games are a very effective method to make students, students learn uh, through experimentation uh, in a very active way, um, practicing skills that can then be transferred to real life. Um, so I can give some examples of such benefits, which are numerous. Uh, so, first of all, games develop a uh, fast strategic thinking and problem solving. In good digital games, you usually have to have a strategy to solve the game and to compete against the others if this is a multiplayer game. And you really have to act uh, fast. Uh, you have to be very quick. Uh, to win the game. These skills are, of course, very useful in actual life. Um, games increase a player's memory capacity, and this is, uh, from the point of view of uh, language learning, this is a very obvious benefit, because memory is the, uh, the, key, uh, the, key, um, the key thing. Um, games engage students in a learning activity through some games, engage students in a learning activity through a storyline. That means that you enter an um, imaginary world and you sometimes completely lose yourself in the game. You don't even realize that what, what you do has can have some relevance for learning, for, language, for learning a language if you play the game in a foreign language. Um, games improve computer fluency, and uh, especially, um, this is obvious, visible in the case of kids. Uh, they usually begin their first experiences uh, with a computer, with uh, playing computer games, and they acquire skills which then will be very useful for other, other in other areas. And um, also we should mention immediate rewards. Um, when you learn, sometimes you have to wait for benefits quite long. For example, in foreign language learning, the, ben the benefits don't come straight away. But in games, you get immediate rewards, even in a small um, form like badges, um, which act as a very uh, motivating factor for students. Um, so now I would like to pre present, um, give you some ideas about platforms, apps um, that can facilitate uh, teaching uh, foreign languages, either using a gamification strategy or GPL game-based learning. Um, so the first platform that comes to mind uh, is Resli, Resli.com. The address is very easy to remember which is a platform um, just for gamifying your classroom. It can be any classroom, also a language uh, classroom. Um, the whole concept is based on uh, quests uh, for learning. Quests are challenges for students uh, that have to be completed online. Um, students, uh, Alex, you... I'm sorry if I interrupt you. Uh, you can uh, move forward the presentation because uh, we can only see one page. You can't hear me? I can hear you. I was uh, wondering if you could uh, go on with the presentation because we can only see the first page. So you can, if you can go for, forward with the presentation, I guess if you click on uh, go on, go on, you have other pages. Uh, of the presentation to show us. Okay, so you mean that you can see the, 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 the screen? 
I can see the screen and I can only see uh, online tools for language learning, uh, language teaching, digital I see. Okay. Right. So if you click on uh, the following page. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I have to um, I have to mm -hmm, move to. So my colleague Andre. Okay. So now, how about now? Unshare and the share again and select share all the windows. Okay, so mm -hmm. you should unshare. Okay. Great. Then share mm -hmm. again and select okay. uh, share all the windows. Okay, so I can, um, you mean I should share again, right? Exactly. So, but I can't leave the studio, right? Because I have only the option to um, either leave the studio or share the screen. So I can try to share and it again. Try to, share the, to share the screen again, and you should find uh, mm -hmm. share all the windows. If I am right. Yeah, I can uh, open a new card. Let's try. Um, like this. And now, can you see it? Uh, let's see. Yes. Uh, great. <laughs> Thank okay. You. And if I move, uh, just let's uh, make a brief test. If I move to a next screen, can you see it? Duolingo? Yes, uh, that's perfect. Thanks. I see. Okay. So I don't know what happened. Something uh, was um, sort of. Thanks, Alex. Uh, I'm very sorry uh, because uh, now I'm see, using another browser. I started with Firefox. It didn't work. Now it seems that Chrome is uh, um, creating some problems. Again, so back to the presentation. So um, by quests, uh, we mean uh, online tasks for students. So they have to go. Um, search the internet and answer certain questions uh, prepared uh, by the teacher. And um, the, of course, the, the, the list of um, uh, internet sites has to be prepared. But then the students have a challenge uh, to solve a problem, uh, to answer a question. And they get, of course, certain badges if they complete certain tasks in a successful way. Um, uh, this is really a great approach. Imagine that you uh, want to teach um, uh, reading skills. The standard approach is that you give uh, students handouts and uh, they have to answer a couple of questions. But in this case, this is more interactive. Uh, it involves uh, real, real investigations of, uh, of material available on the internet. There are some social interactions. The quests can be shared on the platform and so on. So I think it's a great, um, a great tool to gamify a part of uh, language uh, learning uh, um, assignments. Can you move, can you see the next screen? Duolingo? Perhaps yes. Okay, so Duolingo is another application um, which perhaps some of, some of you know. Um, it's an app that you can install on your uh, mobile phone and you get um, and choose a language that you want to learn or revise. There are more than 30 languages available. And you get a fun bite-sized lessons. Um, depending on your level, you get uh, different assignments every day. And of course, um, the, there are many gamification, gamification uh, aspects. So you can earn um, lingots so-called lingots, which is internal currency. So you earn something while playing. You can enter uh, social interactions. You can compete against others. Uh, there is ability to vote on the best, um, for example, translation, if this is the, the, the task. Of course, you can, you, you can earn badges and so on. So I think it's a very, uh, very interesting, very nice tool. We know that it works uh, both with teenagers and even with uh, older people for a, while, for a while. Maybe after some time it can get bored, but uh, it's definitely worth trying. Another, another um, great game which can be used for language teaching is Minecraft. 
I suppose that you are heard the name. The game is very popular among, among teenagers, boys aged 11, 12. Um, I, I suppose most of them would be familiar with the game. And the good, uh, from the point of view of, uh, of teaching, uh, the good news is that Minecraft developed a specific, um, a specific version uh, for learning, uh, Minecraft Education Edition, which, um, which has a lot of um, subject kits that include uh, lessons, uh, uh, downloadable worlds. You know, in Minecraft, you create uh, uh, some fantasy worlds. So you can download some, uh, some baseline uh, uh, stuff. And then there are many um, educational ideas in many different subjects, also in language arts, how to uh, learn uh, while playing. So, for example, Minecraft, from the point of view of uh, teaching foreign languages, Minecraft is a great tool for learning uh, words. You enter a world or create a world and you um, uh, learn vocabulary that relate to certain parts of the environment that you are creating or moving around. Um, Minecraft was uh, developed by a group of uh, Finnish um, designers and then sold to Microsoft, but they have their own uh, portal uh, called Teacher Gaming. And this is a great uh, site uh, where you can find uh, many different, uh, many different games, educational games, all are based on games which are quite popular among young people. Uh, so we are, in this case, uh, they don't have to do something which is alien or artificial uh, for them. They enter their own, let's say, um, gaming environment and they can learn uh, many different subjects, including, as you can see, um, languages. Um, so we don't really have time to talk about the other um, the other aspects of the platform, but at least if you have time, look at Influence, teach languages uh, with this uh, game. Uh, the idea is that you um, navigate around um, a room or a space and you learn uh, vocabulary relating to and various items. And this is a game, so it's not only uh, repeating uh, words and memorizing them, but uh, there are some challenges and awards and so on. Um, um, we don't really get much time to explore another um, gaming environment, which is a virtual reality. Um, the virtual reality really offers uh, great experiences because you can lose yourself in action, explorations, simulations, and so on, using the goggles. Um, the, the concept of virtual reality has been around for quite a while, but only now the technology is really affordable because the headsets, the equipment is not that expensive. Uh, so there are a lot of uh, devices available which can be purchased by a school and um, some schools already have, um, let's say, in small uh, spaces where like uh, labs where uh, people can, um, after the lessons or during breaks, uh, uh, play some games. But this also can be um, done as homework uh, for students who have such equipment. And um, the great advantage of virtual reality is that you, uh, the students get uh, completely immersed in, a, in, a, in an environment. Uh, it's, the immersion is much, much deeper in, than in um, ordinary uh, digital games. Immersion in that case means engagement because uh, you are completely, uh, um, let's say, removed from the, from the world in which you live and you can play, interact uh, in, a, in a completely new environment. And there are some apps which are specifically developed for learning uh, languages in virtual reality, like, for example, Mondly. Uh, you have a link uh, to the 
uh, to the trailer and to the program if you want to download it. I will share the presentation afterwards so you can follow the links if you are interested. Uh, so uh, the idea is that uh, the, the, you, are, you enter um, a virtual environment in which you can have conversations with uh, various characters and there are some challenges to move to the next step. And um, uh, there are many interactive scenarios. For example, you are in New York and you take a taxi, you have to go to a certain place and in order to get there, you have to talk to the driver. You have to uh, give him instructions, understand what he's saying, um, and you feel like in a, or sort of like in a real taxi in a, in a big city. Um, or you arrive at a, a place and you have to talk to a receptionist and make a reservation, of course, in a foreign language. Uh, there are many languages to choose from. Um, so there are a lot of benefits of using such a VR, virtual reality learning apps. So there is a lifelike experience that simulates real situations, which help you can help you build self-confidence. It's much easier to talk to a virtual character to, to the, than to the real thing, especially if you are at a beginner level. Um, so you can challenge yourself um, in a safe environment, um, in quasi-realistic dialogues, you get instant feedback, you get suggestions uh, that enrich your vocabulary, and um, there are options of many languages. Okay, and uh, to, to, um, to close the presentation, I would like to encourage you not only to try, try um, apps that are specifically developed for teaching foreign languages, because there are a lot of uh, games, also virtual reality games, that uh, help to learn a language, uh, although they are not specifically developed for language learning and teaching. So a good example, Job Simulator. Uh, so in this game, it's a virtual reality game, so you need the equipment, the headsets, uh, so you can experience a career of a mechanic, a chef, office worker, um, and, uh, and um, perform different tasks, which require, of course, understanding of a language and uh, ability to answer questions, uh, um, um, answer certain situations that can be understood only uh, if you know the language a little bit. So it's a great practice. Another good game, uh, which I think uh, is worth uh, recommending, um, which is uh, Keep Talking and Nobody Explodes. So imagine that one player is trapped in a virtual room with a ticking time bomb, uh, and they must defuse the bomb. The other players, are the experts uh, who must give you instructions in order for you to decipher the information. Of course, everything is done in, for example, in English. So you have to understand uh, what's going on in a foreign language. And um, um, there is a catch in the game. The experts can't see the bomb, so everyone will need to talk it out. So there is a lot of talking, a lot of exchanges, and students enter the game, play the game, they don't even realize that they are learning or consolidating the language. Okay, basically, that's it. Um, so if, you, if we have time for some feedback, maybe you know some other good games that can be used for foreign language teaching and learning. So maybe we can share some links via chat. And of course, if you have, have any questions, uh, please, please ask and I'll try to answer.
Okay. Uh, thank you very much, Alex. Uh, now we have uh, Julianne. Um, uh, Julianne will be presenting Kahoot, and she is uh, also from Germany, uh, from uh, the partner Karl, uh, Karl Dursberg. So, Can you hear me? Yes, you can. You can start the presentation. Okay. Um, yeah. Hi, everyone. Uh, nice to meet you. Um, my name is Juliana, and I work at uh, CDC, uh, Karl Duisberg Centrum Berlin. And uh, today I will introduce you the learning tool uh, Kahu. Yeah. And um, some of you probably know it already, but for those uh, who don't know it yet, I would like to introduce it um, because it's my favorite learning tool and um, yeah, I use it very often in my classes. So, um, so that's the order um, in which I want to explain everything. Yeah, uh, when you can use Kahoo in uh, situations, I think, like this, <laughs> um, when uh, students are exhausted from uh, a lot of grammar exercises and they need a change, I think Kahoo is a very good change. Because um, Kahoo um, yeah, is very helpful for the students. Um, because they can uh, practice the grammar they have already know, um, learned. And um, yeah, it is very motivating because they use their um, mobile phone and it is like a little um, competition. Yeah. And for the teachers, it is very practically to use and very easy to use. And it is for free. Uh, what do you want more? <laughs> okay, so that is the um, website address. Uh, we can I can show you the website. Okay. Hmm. Just a moment. Um, can you see the website now? Can you see the website? Okay, good. Um, okay, good. Um, so um, this is the site address. Uh, feel free to open the website and try it out um, at the same time as I explain it. Or you can just listen and we will do it also together later. Yeah. Uh, for those who will try it, um, this is the sign up button. Okay. Yeah, step one, just click the sign up button. And then there will be this screen. Then just click the button teacher because you are a teacher. And 
then there will be the button, no, no, the screen, this, uh, the screen. Um, I think you teach us all at a, a language uh, school like me. So just uh, click the button other. So then there will be this screen and you can sign up with your email and a password or you can sign up with Google account or Microsoft account. I personally uh, prefer to um, sign up with an email and a password. And here, um, this uh, when you wish to receive information or offers um, and so on, then leave it like this. Um, I don't want to receive it, so I leave it blank. So then uh, you will see this screen and just click the button continue for free. Um, I'm wondering if I too fast now. Can you already follow me? Yeah. Okay. Um, so uh, you can write here your name or your username and so on, but you can also um, leave it blank and um, click just the button maybe later. So then, uh, yeah, we are done. Uh, then you are logged in and you can here um, click the button, see how it works, or you can create a code. Yeah, and that we will do it now together. So, um, yeah, I, I can... Yeah, show it uh, how I will sign up. How would I how I explain it? So I'm a teacher. So I will click other, and here I will write a um, an email and a password. And I will leave it blank. So then click the button, sign up. Okay. Yeah, there are many um, other offers, but I think uh, the free version is enough. So. I will click the button maybe later. So, and here, yeah, you can uh, see how it works. Okay, we can try it together. Um, when you choose an exercise and you will play it um, together with the students, and um, then you um, have to click the button play. We will do it also together, uh, so don't worry. Uh, and then there will be a pin. And you can tell the students that they um, uh, take their handies. And when they go to the um, kahoo.it uh, website, then they will see um, uh, the screen. and. Here they can uh, write a pin. Yeah, so I will write a pin here. So and then enter. And then here I will click this. And I can write my name or my nickname. And then just uh, click the button. OK, go. Then um, the exercise will start.
So here, um, on your handy, you have to choose the right answer you think it is. Oh, just um, yellow. No, it was the false answer. The right answer was blue. Yeah, and so you can um, check this uh, with the students, and you can explain. And then move to the next question. Here you can uh, see the scoreboard, and then there will be the next question. So that was the exit dem um, the demo, the demo. So we will exit the demo. Um, yeah, and now. I will show you how you can create the Kahoo on exercise on your side. So just click this button. And here you can type uh, your question. Um, like, hmm, what is the capital of Germany. So, and here you can choose um, the time limit. Five seconds, 10 seconds, 20 seconds, 30 seconds, and so on. Um, I can recommend you uh, to choose 20 seconds. Juliana, Juliana, Juliana. Yeah. Sorry, ähm, man kann dein Bildschirm nicht sehen, man sieht nur die PowerPoint-Präsentation. Ich weiß nicht, irgendwie hat das, glaube ich, noch keiner so richtig gemerkt. Du müsstest mal irgendwie dein Bildschirm nochmal neu teilen, damit man auch die Webseite sieht, weil man sieht die ganze Zeit nur die PowerPoint-Präsentation. Oh nein, jetzt habe ich jetzt die ganze Zeit erklärt. Okay. Genau. Okay, oh. Sehr irgendwie gut. Andrea, Andrea meint hier irgendwie, du sollst äh, den Bildschirm nochmal äh, nicht teilen und dann nochmal Share All Windows machen. Ähm. Also, ja, weil das, ähm, ich kann halt äh, niemanden sehen, niemanden hören. Deshalb, ja, ja. deshalb habe ich mich jetzt gerade mal live zuschalten lassen. Ja, sehr gut. Warte mal, wie kann ich das jetzt machen? Also irgendwie den Bildschirm nicht mehr teilen ähm. und dann nochmal Share All Windows. Okay, nochmal. Share screen. Und dann all windows. Aber hier, ah. Aber hier steht nur gesamter Bildschirm. Anwendungsfenster und Chrome Tab. Okay, dann machen wir äh, gesamter Bildschirm. Ja, jetzt kann man auch die Website sehen. Wenn du jetzt auf die Website gehst, dann... Jetzt bist du im E-Mail-Programm gerade, ne? Okay. Okay, jetzt irgendwie, jetzt zeigt... Kann ich das jetzt sehen? Nee. Mhm. Oder du teilst mal nur den Chrome. So, jetzt? Nicht? Geht nicht? Vielleicht gleich. Andrea, can you help her how to do that? Because you are the master of that here. <laughs> oder, oder vielleicht mache ich das hier. Warte mal so. Jetzt? Könnt ihr das jetzt sehen? Jetzt sieht man... Auf jeden Fall mal irgendwas von Kahoot. Okay, da war ich nämlich gewesen. Dann äh, würde ich hier weitermachen, oder? Es ist halt sehr verpixelt. Ich weiß nicht, wie die anderen das sehen können, aber... Okay, das ist ein bisschen schade. Ah, jetzt kann man es sehen. Okay, ja, ja, okay. Ja, yeah, you can go on. Okay. Okay, ähm... Um Yeah, okay. Also here um, you can choose the time limit. I will recommend you um, to choose 20 seconds for um, normal level students and 10 for advanced. 
Uh, five seconds, I think it's very short, and 30 is a little bit too long. So we choose um, then 10 because we are advanced. <laughs> so, and here you can um, choose the points you will give for each question. Uh, zero, thousand, or two thousand. So I choose thousand. And here you can um, choose um, if it's a single select question or a multi select. Um, but when you see this um, symbol, this crown symbol, that means uh, this is a pro version. You have to buy uh, an offer. Yeah. But um, as I said, uh, I think not that you have to uh, need this. Uh, yeah. It's enough to use the single select and the free version. So um, here you can uh, use a photo um, from your computer or a photo from the Kahoo image library. Um, here I will show you. You have um, several topics from you can choose a photo. Um, yeah, the question was what is the capital of Germany? So I will choose the topic geography. And then let's see if there is a photo we can use, we would like to use. Mm. Hmm. Okay, I will choose this. So, and then here I can. Uh, write the answer. Mm. Foot. Hamburg. Berlin. And Berlin is the right answer. So I will click this to mark it at the right uh, answer. Then I will write the city, please. So, and here I can add a question. Yeah. And here, um, this is also for the uh, pro version, but uh, you can choose um, between this quiz version or true or false. Yeah, let's um, try it this. So the time limit, 10 seconds. Then I will upload an image from my computer. This. And uh, Question mm. Is Berlin capital of Germany? Yeah. It's just an example. So, um, yeah, and it is true. So, check this. And then you can add other questions, but uh, it was just to show you how it um, works. So we are done. And here you can type, um, enter a Kahoot title. Um, I write um, cover Germany. And here you can uh, write in description. Yeah, but I'd leave it blank for now. So then choose the button continue. And this, uh, this exercise you made is yet uh, in your My Kahoo folder and there you can find it. So then I will click it. And we can play it. Yeah, so um, we saw um, how to make a quiz. 
Now I will uh, show you how to use quizzes that you or other teachers um, have already created because um, that's the reason why I uh, find Co so practical um, because I usually uh, don't have much time to prepare um, anything uh, besides the lesson preparations. Um, in Kahoo, there are so many um, ready-made uh, materials you can use. That is the thing I uh, like it. Yeah. So when you uh, click at this um, discover, then you will see a blank bar. And here you can um, write a topic, uh, like uh, for an example, prepositions. And um, there are many uh, exercises, a lot of exercises in in every language, German, English, Spain, Italian, Spanish, and Chilean. Yeah, um, I think you will find something. So then um, let's try it. Mm. Uh, when you click on the title, then you can see the exercise in details and you can see if you like this exercise or not. So like this. Yeah. And uh, when you like it, then you can uh, play it right now or you can uh, copy it. Um, here, when you click of this um, points, three points, then you can see uh, this duplicate and just click this then it will duplicate in your folder and you can find it in my Kahoot. and here this is a symbol um, to make that is a uh, that it is a uh, favorite exercise of you um, but this exercise I don't like, so I will look if there is an another, a better. Hmm. Yeah, I like this, so I will duplicate this. Then in my folder, I can find it. So um, now I need uh, four volunteers uh, who want to play this with me uh, to show you the others uh, how it uh, works. Um, yeah, four volunteers, please. Um, okay, um, how it is when Andrea, Nika, um, Beta and Sven will uh, help, yeah, you are the volunteers and now uh, take your handies and you can just Go to this website. Uh, can you see my um, PowerPoint, uh, PowerPoint presentation right now? Can you see it? No. Okay. Hmm. Uh, then just. Okay, then when you uh, don't can see it, then I will write it here. Go to this website, please, before, and then we will try. So, but you can see my Kahoo uh, screen, right?
Okay, so then um, here when you will play um, an exercise, then uh, just um, click on the button classic. And you four volunteers, you will see the pin code. So um, write it. In your handies, and then let's start. I'm waiting for you. Above, below, in front of, behind. Above, below, in front of, behind. Keep on listening to the rhyme about above, below, in front of, behind. Now the bat is above the cat, just like the cat is below the bat. And the rat is now in front of the cat, just like the cat is behind the rat. Let's sing that one more time, but this time you sing with me. Now the bat is above the cat. Hello, Juliana. Yeah. We, we cannot see. We cannot see the pin. Can you give us the pin so we can uh, play? I can see the pin, okay. Um, Inside, um, outside, beside, between. If you can uh, write it either in the chat or tell us so that we just in, in share my screen again. Inside, outside, beside, between. Now yeah, you can try that, yes. Now the rocks are outside the box, and the fox is beside the box. You have to share all just the way you did before. Okay, now sing that with me. Now the rocks are inside the box. Now the rocks are outside the box. And the fox is beside the box. Now the fox is between the blocks. Great work, everybody. Let's review. Above. Below. In front of. Behind. Did you first click stop sharing? Yeah. Outside. Okay, I'll try it again. This side. Between. So. Maybe also if you can uh, just lower a little bit your volume because the music is uh, it's, uh, covering your <laughs> your voice. Okay, can you um, see it now? Not yet. Above, below, in front of, behind. Above, below, in front of, behind. Hey Juliane, ja. das ist immer noch dasselbe. Also du, 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 du teilst deinen Bildschirm offensichtlich nicht. Also du musst irgendwie anklicken, dass du den gesamten Bildschirm teilst. Ja, das funktioniert irgendwie nicht. Ich, ähm, weiß auch nicht. Also man hört deinen Ton, aber man kann nicht sehen, was du machst. Okay. Ja, ich weiß eigentlich, eigentlich, eigentlich ist es ja eigentlich, was ich. Also es ist jetzt schade eigentlich, dass man das jetzt nicht ähm, äh, probieren kann, aber ähm, ich habe jetzt auch gelesen, dass es vielleicht jetzt einfach zu viel Zeit vergangen ist. Äh, vielleicht reicht es ja auch, weil also... Ja, wäre halt ganz gut, wenn man irgendwie trotzdem sehen könnte, wie man den Code dann bekommt und wie man das einmal sieht. Dazu ja. müsstest du halt gucken, dass du einfach nochmal den richtigen Bildschirm teilst. Aber okay, oder ich mache das jetzt so... Ja, jetzt kann man die gesamte Webseite sehen. Das ist offensichtlich besser. Ja, so? Okay, aber dann war es ja. auch gar nicht das Gesamte. Also, dann habe ich jetzt was anderes gewählt, als ich eigentlich wählen sollte. Aber naja, es klappt ja. So. Okay, danke. Okay, can you ask me this? Yeah, then for volunteers, uh, please um, 
enter the pin onto your hand, and then let's start playing. Okay, then let's start. Okay, so here you can see um, with, uh, what is the right answer, and you can go next. Then you can see how much points, how many points uh, the students got. And then uh, when you click next, then there will be the next question. Yeah, and uh, so on. Um, then at the end, there is an award ceremony. I think that's very good uh, for to motivate um, the students. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think uh, that's um, yeah, that's all I will I uh, would like to show you. Um, do you have any questions? Hello. Okay, then I will I'll pass the word on to um, Jessica. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Julian. Hello. Um, yes, so I'm Jessica from Iberica, also in Berlin. Um, we are a language school that offers German courses as integration courses, but also private language courses. So for English, Spanish, um, Yes, I already started here. Um, English, Spanish, and Portuguese, French, Dutch. Um, I'm actually an English teacher, so that's what I'll be kind of sharing with you today. Um, yes, if we can go ahead and share my screen, I think it should work. Um, now I will have the same problems. <laughs> Perfect. Um, so, just one moment. Here we are. So, seems I'm also a little behind. Can you guys see my screen here? Okay. Um, so, I will be discussing quizzes, which is an online app very similar to Kahoot's, what Julianne just presented. Um, a little bit different features, which you'll see through my presentation and my um, show of how quizzes works. So I'll take you through this here. Uh, maybe it's easier if I am not in the full. Okay. So a little bit about quizzes. Quizzes is a free app or a website um, for every subject from math, history, languages, etc. So for you to play at home or in class. So as a teacher, you can present these quizzes as part of your class. Um, and then as a teacher, you can sign up as a student or even a parent if you want to follow the progress of your students. Um, Quizzes is available in English, Spanish, French, Indonesian, Dutch, Polish, Polish, and Russian. 
but you can also create and customize your own quizzes. So if they don't have the whole app in your language, you could create a quiz in your native language or whatever language you're teaching, and that would be one way to share it. Um, so if we look here, I'll take you through the very first steps of quizzes. The very first step would be to create an account. Um, if you go to quizzes.com, you see here, you just sign up as almost every other kind of website. I already have an account, so I'm gonna log in directly here. You see you can log in with your Gmail account if you want to, or create a whole new account based on your private information. So similar to Kahoot's, we have here also quizzes pre-made um, where you can share a code. And from that code, you can disseminate the quiz to all of your students. And um, as Julianne just showed how that works on Kahoot's, I won't take you through all of that step by step again, um, but in a very simple way to show, if you would like to pick a specific quiz, you click on it here and you will get the game code here. So as the teacher, you would be able to see this game code and share that with your students. Okay. Um, sorry. But more importantly, what I'd like to show you is how you can make your own quiz using quizzes. And um, you see here, up here, you have a bit called create a quiz. So the first step you would like you'd have to do is to name your quiz. Um, similar, I've chosen a similar topic, um, Berlin history, I decided here. Um, so you would choose your relevant subject. And here you see you can decide what kind of questions you would like to use for your quiz. There's multiple choice, checkbox, fill in the blank, polls, open-ended, and slides. Um, but before we get into making the quiz, I want to show you a little bit about how you can specifically um, kind of customize your quiz. If you look down here, you see there's the quiz quality score. That's quizzes way of showing you how well you've designed your quiz. As you see right now, I only have 2.5 out of 10 points, so quite a low score. Um, that's because the only thing I've successfully done thus far is create a quiz name, Berlin History, which you could edit here if you decide to change um, the name of your quiz. But what if I want to add a picture? Then you can take a picture from your computer, um, let's see. So I've created here a little bit of pictures, but bear in mind you have to use pictures that have no copyright issues. Um, I found these pictures on Pixabay. Um, there are many different free websites to use to access free pictures, but this is one that I found for Berlin. Um, again, then you want to select your language. So you see here, even though the app or the website is only available in those specific languages I mentioned before, you can set your quiz to whatever language you want. Um, so we're going to stick with English. Then you see quizzes is appropriate for all levels um, from kindergarten all the way to Sorry. Um, professional development. We're just going to choose that as we're working with adult education, um, or I am personally. 
And then you can set if you want to have this public or private just visible to you. So. Oh, sorry, I should hide this. <laughs> um, yes, so now you see I have seven out of five. Uh, 7.5 out of 10 points. And um, the last thing it is asking me to do is add at least four questions. So let's try to add some questions. I will start here with multiple choice. I prepared the questions beforehand in a Word document. Um, you can also, of course, just directly enter them into quizzes, that's up to you, what you think's easiest, but for the purpose of this exercise, I've already created them here. And then you want to give some different answers. So. For example, you have to click which is the correct answer. So again, similar to Kahoot's. And you can also add media to these questions as well. So here I have a picture from the Berlin Wall. You can allow a certain amount of time for each question. In this case, I think 10 seconds is enough. And whenever you see the lightning bolt here, this indicates that it is a pro feature. So quizzes is free for almost everything you need to do, but there are some features that are only available if you create a paid account. That would be something like this. Um, you see here, upgrade to super. This would remove any ads. So for it to be free, there are sometimes ads that come on quizzes. If you want to embed videos, so have this kind of extra media feature, then you would also need a super account. And if you want to have kind of advanced um, reports, which I'll show you a bit in what the free report um, options are. Um, but one other thing, if you wanted to add a little bit more, a more detailed explanation of the correct answer, you would need a super account in order to do that. Um, so for this purpose, we're not gonna use that. We're just gonna go ahead and save this question. Yeah. So that's the question number one. Um, again, if you wanna have then a second question I've created here. Sorry. And again, you have to click the correct answer and so on and so forth. Are there any questions thus far? Um, okay. So I'm not gonna go ahead and make all four questions because I think you get the point. Um, but as you see, each question would be here. You can edit each question. You can also duplicate the question or you can delete the question if you decide it's no longer relevant. Um, another important feature here is if you had created your questions from a spreadsheet from on an Excel, you could upload it directly here. Um, I don't have an example to show, but this would be either with a template that quizzes allows you to use or a power uh, Excel file that you could upload directly here and then all of your questions would be added. Um, so let's click done here.
So when you are here again in your um, activity, so if you first access your home page and click then activity, you will be able to see all of the quizzes that you are running. Right now I have no quizzes running. All the quizzes you have completed, so either as a player or as shared, and then all the quizzes you have created. So here we have the Berlin quiz that I created. And you have the option as a teacher or a student to practice, so to play the quiz yourself or to challenge your friends. To challenge your friends would be the same kind of concept as Cahoots, where you see you add your name in and you get the game code. So you would share that game code with whoever you want to challenge and then they would be able to play with you or as the teacher you would be able to share it with your students and quiz them that way. Um, as you see, you need at least two players to start the game. So we're not going to join that this way. But we can start it this way. So again, you have the questions. What year did the Berlin Wall fall? I will guess. How many inhabitants does Berlin have? And so on and so forth. So here you would see the exact number of questions you got right. So because there were only two questions, I got two questions right. If anything was incorrect, you see also how long it took you to answer each question. If you skipped any questions, that would also show up here. And it shows your score. So it's a fun way to kind of test your students that. Um, but because we looked at how you kind of play these quizzes in the last little exercise with Julianne, I wanted to show you some of the special features that quizzes allows for teachers. Um, because there's quite a few resources specific for teachers to use that I think are really helpful and kind of a motivating way, interactive way that allows also your students to create quizzes. Um, it's not only that teachers are the ones creating them, but also the students can use it as kind of a review exercise, or if you have a vocabulary lesson, you want to test with them with pictures, they can use a lot of media. It's a fun interactive way to get them involved that way. Um, so for teacher resources from quizzes, let me see. So Quizzes has a whole site just specific for schools. Um, if you have any specific questions, you can directly ask them in here, or you can look at kind of pre-made quizzes tips. Um, one being learn the basics, getting started. Of course, two, creating quizzes as we just did. Um, hosting games. That's something I'll show you in one moment with reporting and as students on how to play the quiz. So if you wanna give your students a little information, say you're not in the classroom and you're giving this as a home assignment, you could also share this with your students. Um, so if we go back to my page here.
sorry, just one moment. <laughs> Don't know, I'm not able to find. So the website um, is a bit different than the app. So I apologize, just one moment as I try to find. So here I was talking about the quiz reports. Um, this is something as a teacher you can use to keep note of all your students' progress. Um, on quizzes, if you go to the reports tab in the left navigation bar, it will click and take you to the reports screen. So you see here reports. Um, as I do not have any reports on my app here, you're not able to see it. Um, Again, it's because the difference between the app and the website feature is a little different. But here you see my library. So as a teacher, you would be able to access this and see what your students have played. You see this was played zero times, also zero times, and here one time. If you click on the actual report, you are able to see the whole quiz and assign it as homework. This is something you could share directly with your students. And give a custom deadline. So say I want it to be completed by next week. Then you would share this link with your students or enter this code and they would be given this as a deadline assignment for September 7th and they would have to participate where you can follow their attempts, their accuracy and how many questions they completed. At the end, you're also able to download or print the report so you have it as a kind of saved feature as the teacher. Um, another really nice feature from quizzes is the opportunity to what they call teleport questions. So if you want to teleport questions from one quiz to another, um, similar to in Cahoots, if you really like one pre-made quiz, you're able to take questions from specific um, quizzes and add them to another one to form your perfect um, quiz. That's very well explained here. So. Here we go.
So again, just three simple steps. You search for your relevant quiz, find the questions you want, and hit the red button. You see here a red button, and you can add it to your quiz. So it's a very simple way to form a perfect quiz using pre-made questions. Um, as Julianne also said, we don't always have all the time in the world to create our original quizzes. So this way you can use pre-existing questions and form together your own quiz. Um, and I think that is all um, I have for this. Um, for quizzes, um, it's very similar to Kahoot, so I don't want to take you through all the same stuff, but I hope there were some new ideas here. And um, I'll share the presentation, so if you have any questions or need any access to those links for teachers, um, those will all be available for you there. Okay, thank you very much, Jessica, for your information. I think you've shared uh, a lot of interesting and uh, useful um, Oops. Um, okay, so now I would just like to um, talk a little bit about the handbook. Uh, so um, during this uh, today's workshop, you only uh, got a few of the activities, a few of the, uh, of the applications that are also included in the handbook. So if you um, uh, download and uh, check through the, the the handbook, the activities, the teachers part, you'll find the uh, uh, many more. Uh, so this handbook was created um, during these uh, 12 trainings that we have, uh, that we had uh, for teachers and managers, uh, which of course 12 trainings gave them plenty of time to create uh, good quality activities and case studies for the managers. Uh, I would like um, to, to show you the, 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 the way the handbook looks like. So I will just share my screen. Just a second. Okay. Okay. You can now see my uh, screen, right? Um, okay. So this is the the first page of the handbook. Um, the title. And uh, here we have the, the introduction and the uh, content. So you can also, you see here you have the teacher's part and here you have the part for the managers and it's also, uh, you have the pages. So uh, for whichever application or topic you're interested in, you can just uh, go to, um, if you uh, are interested in any uh, information, maybe more detailed <clears throat> about the project partners, uh, here in the handbook, you can find the, the websites. And uh, also you can check that on our uh, Facebook pages of the partners and also Best for Languages, our uh, project official page. Uh, so yeah, so this is the introduction. As you can see, then all this, uh, all these exercises and uh, activities are here. So this is uh, this. Um, we also in, uh, included the pictures from the um, the training, so you can see also how it looked like. Uh, a lot of uh, screenshots, uh, so that you can easily imagine how it looks like, how to use it. Um, so this is the the teachers part. And I'm just going to quickly skip to the manager's part. And this is the management part. And you have uh, a lot of case studies, uh, which are very interesting. Uh, as I said, if you use, um, if you are also in some managerial position, you will find a lot of useful tips here as well. Um, just a second. OK. Mm. Yeah, so I really uh, highly recommend you to uh, to download it, to read through it. Uh, I'm sure that you won't be disappointed. 
I would also invite you to share maybe the this video and the handbook uh, with uh, other teachers, maybe your managers. Uh, to 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 advise them to to really go through the whole material, um, and also uh, the the handbook uh, can be uh, downloaded in the there's a link in the description uh, box of this video. So I thank you all uh, for joining us. I hope you uh, gained a lot of knowledge, and uh, we will see you next time.